a banner which we now have and will continue to use. It's marvelous. Make sure and take a look at it in the back corner while you're here. Yeah, that's a great, that is great. We will now have with us for a long time. Incredibly creatively done. Is that you want to bring it up more, right? Nice, hot evening crowd. That's great. Because of the air conditioning. this every time. Now, now we have to ask something of you. We have a second meeting this month. In late July, we've got the Penn Brewery coming in to talk to, way back from when they were snowed out in January. And uh, they'll be here two weeks from tonight. We, uh, we urge you to come to that. Then we'll take August off. And in September, Barbara Burston, who writes extensively about the Jews of Pittsburgh and Squirrel Hill, will be here talk about a new book that she came out with a few months ago and some other things she'd been researching. Uh, and then we do have programs the rest of the, uh, of the year. You'll see them. I handed this out. I'm Mike Ehrman. I'm chair president of this group. Uh, we've been here 16 years. We've probably had 120, 130 of these programs, maybe 140 along the way. We now have 80, over 80 of them that you can access through our website. Uh, we put them on YouTube and you can get them there. Uh, a free hour of enter uh, entertainment if you'd like. We've committed to talking about Squirrel Hill and Pittsburgh Regional and Pittsburgh City history. And we've been very fortunate to have a lot of interesting speakers come and talk to us. <coughs> membership organization, we welcome new members all the time. Some of us marched in the Bicentennial Pittsburgh Parade uh, this last, uh, uh, last weekend, and a banner that Audrey Glickman, one of our members of our board, made up. She's sitting at the camera there. Uh, you ought to go over and see it. Other uh, folks who are here tonight, the leadership of the group, I want you to meet them. Helen Wilson, Vice President. Where's Helen? She was here. The she put the uh, there. She's the chair lady tonight. Right? <laughs> uh, Helen, you've seen her writing in the Squirrel Hill News. Uh, Helen is the editor of a new book that we are writing this summer, which will come out probably in the winter uh, under, under the Historical Society. Betty Conley is here, our other vice president. Betty was the editor of our first book, the picture book that many of you have seen and is still available. Uh, I've got Ralph Lund, uh, a board right member. Here. There's Ralph. As I said, Audrey is here. And uh, our uh, Eveline, Eveline Young, our treasurer, is in the back. You can barely see her hand back there. And our webmaster is Patricia use in the back, and I think I haven't missed anyone, and I'm not going to insult anyone else tonight. So that's our leadership, and uh, we are very happy to have you here tonight. Long time ago, one of our, excuse me just a second, uh, I, I, modern world, my phone decided to turn on a film, and it's in my ear. I turned the sound off on the phone, but I didn't do it right, sorry. Uh, so I wasn't hearing myself. A um, long time ago, one of our members asked if we could do something about the auto dealers and service stations of Swirl Hill, which turns out to be a very significant part of the business history of this neighborhood. Not so much now, but it was. And um, we have a good friend named Jim Rich. He now lives in Bucks County but has worked with us on a walking tour, and she, he uh, owned uh, Frank Rich Men's Clothing, and he's always advised us a lot, and when I was asking Jim some questions six months ago about, what about auto dealers? He said, find out if uh, Maurice Sable is still willing to come and talk to you, because he's great. So now we have Maury here tonight, and he's asked, since he was an old-time resident of Squirrel Hill, he's asked to tell a few non-auto anecdotes, as well as talk about cars. Maury went to Alderdice, uh, went to Duquesne, and then to Southern California, and we're very excited to have him here. The floor is yours. Okay. 
everybody, if you can here, put your hand up. Uh, I'm thrilled to be here. It's the first time I ever talked to a fellow audience. So if I make a mistake, laugh. <laughs> Tonight I brought my daughter, my old daughter, she lived in Boston, and we were just reminiscent. We lived down at 5636 Forb Street, the apartment, and I brought her home in the same car it's at, this 1950 Rambler Convert. <laughs> Mrs. Smaller. Smaller lived in the apartment with Bring us. Bring the mic up. And uh, I'm thrilled really to be here. I met some people I haven't seen for a long time. So I'm going to make this as informal as I can. If there's any questions or made any mistakes, please raise your hand. Let me know what I did wrong. How did I get into the automobile business? I inherited it from my father. In 1953, I worked for him a little before that. We were up in the Hill District selling Nash and GMC trucks, which is an unusual combination. Uh, later on, I came to work for my father. My brother left, and he came open. Oh, came to Scorleville and opened a existing Nash dealer right where the Jewish Community Center is. It was Forbes Murray Nash. The second year he switched to Mercury. Then they were in business for about five years and closed up. In fact, before it was a garage, <laughs> darling the nursery used to keep her plants and trees there. Uh, as I go along, I'll try to reminisce a different thing. I told somebody tonight that the Marfield Hotel years ago had a bus that they used to go down to Ford Field and pick up the ball players, and that's where they stayed. A lot of people don't know Ford Field had two businesses in existence. Underneath the right field was a check making company, and on the bleachers, it was a Stuart truck automobile dealership. I imagine not many of you remember that because I guess I'm too old. Um, I had different dealerships. I had Nash, we were up in the Hill District. I moved to Carrick and was there 30, all, all total about 50 some years. I also. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, in 1983, I switched from American Motors to Chevrolet, and I quit in 61. No, I'm sorry, not 61. Oh, one. Uh, That's clear. I look back and how different Squirrel Hill was when I was growing up. Uh, I just thought the other day, the Manor's Theater has to be over 80 years old. That's a that's pretty long longevity. Uh, I'll give you a rundown on gas stations. Well, we weren't short. There was roughly 15 in Murray Avenue and Forward Avenue. I'll give you the list of some up as soon as I find it. Oh, my daughter says, I'm at gas. What is it, 50 and 60? I think it was six gallons for a dollar. Hmm. <laughs> gas stations in the 60s. At Murray and Lavac was Atlantic Station. At Ford Avenue, City Service. It's now a get go. On Forward Avenue, also, next to the bowling alley, it was previously a uh, putt putt for golf. And uh, then they built a garage and a gas station into that property. Uh, excuse me. And down on Murray Avenue, Parker Gas Station was between Pole Eyes and Marfield Apartments at Little Lot. Uh, 
bottom of Forward Avenue was an Emico station, the Emico. Across the pool eyes with two, uh, one empty lot, the agents were parking across the street. It was Atlantic and Gulf. On Bartlett Street was an Emico, Sunoco, and beside them was a, let me get heck now. What did your dad <coughs> have? My father was an automobile dealer, Nash. Yeah, no, who, no, one, one person's parents had a. Uh, that was me. What was it? Yeah, it was yeah, it Baker. Was in Baker was next to Schulberg's restaurant. Thank you very much. I'll bring you along next time. <laughs> uh, then the big thing of the year was at Murray and Forbes, the golf station. Was the biggest, I think, golf station in the United States. <laughs> also, at Forbes and Shady, there was a Mobile, and Nesso, Atlantic, and next door was an Emico station. There were four gas stations at that corner and part of the next door to one of them. And of course, now it's uh, it was Starbucks. So that's the gas station. Business. Now the automobile business, <coughs> the Marfil Apartments had a showroom, I think it's <coughs> Levin Levine, has a gym there and it was a originally a Dodge dealership by the name of David Horowitz owned it. He moved out and in came McCain Oldsmobile with Oldsmobile. Up the street, the gas station next to the Bowling Alley, <coughs> excuse me, was a garage and they took in the soda Plymouth. I think the man's name was Jaime Ferdinand. He walked across the street and down the two doors and Samson Buick was there for many years. And uh, they had the Buick dealership. <coughs> you go around the corner you went up to uh, where the Chinese restaurant is now. Uh, on the corner was a drugstore. Anyhow, it was a Ford dealership in 1930. And that's when Henry Ford did a great thing. He shipped all the cars that they couldn't sell to dealers all around the country who didn't have money and they had to take them or lose the franchise. Oh. So that was that dealership. After they left, my father went in to try to sell Hotmobile, which was made in Cleveland, which is, went out of business in 34. In fact, they're building on Penn Avenue, right near Wilkinsburg, the building's still there at the original end. Um, <clears throat> then we go around the corner and Constantine Pontiac was in the middle of the block, and they had Pontiac. Later on, they built a building, the Forbes and Shady, where that Starbucks is now. Across the street in the corner where Dunkin' Donuts are, does anybody know what that originally was? Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Came in Chevrolet. After that, it became a theater. And now the three till stores. You're very good. I'm gonna bring you along. <laughs> How old are you? <laughs> That's a dirt. Uh, getting back to the automobile business. Uh, funny two stories I remember. This one man was a warehouse manager for a drug company downtown Pittsburgh, and he was a good customer. His son did very well for himself. I won't mention his name. And one day he came in, he said, I'd like to buy a new car. I says, all right, Frank, what do you want? He says, I want a two-door scrambler, wood collar, told me, the pull strip. Three weeks later, the car came in. He got in the car, paid for it, went home, came back. Ten minutes later, he says, I told you I wanted a two-door. I mean, a four-door. 
me. I can help him this time. I wanted a two door. I says, right there's two door. He says, I meant on each side. <laughs> <laughs> the next one, I saw these three women, widows, they worked in Nashville Business Company. They hear their car gets towed in, and my service manager went up and opened up the hood. They put drugs in it to keep the motor running, and it burned the whole car. Uh, we talked about we get all the automobile tours. Let me just say, make sure. The day the automobile business is completely different when I started. Uh, the day big companies are making every dealer, unless you notice it, remodel their facility. Sometimes they'll pay half of it, sometimes they won't. Uh, I did have a Lincoln Park, there's no Lincoln Mercury on the Merrill Wolf, which I sold out. In fact, I talked to my ex-partner today. I remember in 1955, when I was selling Nash, GM came out with a curved windshield, and we lost every business we had in the big car. <coughs> so Nash Cap Corporation, Closed the factory for two months and changed the style of the car so they could have a curved windshield in the car. Another hot item was Buick had portholes in their fenders that everybody went crazy for. Uh, oh, I remember that. <laughs> and also, the big seller, too, was the automatic transmission. The next problem we had was the heaters in the cars. And uh, they had hot water heater, and in 1938, Nash Rambert put out a heater that brought in fresh air from outside. They called it the weather eye, which did a lot. Then we had a dealer in Monroeville. I won't tell you what kind of car he sold. He was selling cars like mad. And the dealers couldn't figure out what. He deleted the heaters on all the cars because they were installed. You didn't have to take them. And the poor people, when they went to put a heater in, cost them a sort of amount of money because you had to put all new pipes and everything in it. That's why you beat everybody selling cars. Uh, also, years ago, and there's one left, I think, in the country. At distributorships, you had the franchise, like Southwest Florida, from Alabama, whatnot. There one dealer down there now has it, and he went into every kind of business. They get, they were getting five percent. In Pittsburgh, we had Ermin Cadillac. It was a distributor. Uh, Samson had a distributor for a while. And then Hudson, a name of course, where the Ford plant was on Long Boulevard, was a distributor. Also, the Ford plant used to assemble cars. And there, I guess it was Mollies and Marl T's, I don't know. Second, uh, one second. Today, it bothers me more about our own bill business. I don't know if you people are related to it, is the lies they tell on their ads in the paper. When you see a car like $15.99, then you have to go down to the bottom and have two pair of binoculars to <laughs> see put $4,000 now. <laughs> that thing, when you buy a car, not now because the interest is low, but it's never come back. You have to find out what your financing is because there's a lot of money. Uh, like five years ago, it was say 6%, the dealer could charge 8, the 2% went in his pocket. Uh, of course, today, lucky we have low interest rates. That's why you see some of this inventory. If they had to pay like they did, in 1980, with 18%, you multiply that by five, then you divide it, and you had a big bundle. It came out to 
about 20 some percent on the car. So you have to watch yourself. Uh, getting back to Murray Avenue, I think the oldest place is in Squirrel Hill. If I'm wrong, correct me. Is the newsstand they called Young's years ago. The other one is Little Shoes. And I think the other third one I can remember is Squirrel Cafe when the Prohibition came in. Is there any more? I think that's only three original. And what bothers me is Forbes Street was a gorgeous place before. I don't appreciate it too much now. It isn't like it used to be. Of course, nothing used to be. Uh, we had a lot of drugstores in uh, Squirrel Hill. We had one uh, Marillium Lilac. We had the Marfield Apartments had one. Marfield on the corner, it burnt down, they had one. There's Phillips Pharmacy. There was Saul's across on Murray. Across the street was Douglas Street. Up the street was Callahan's. Then up the street, uh, Beacon. the Beacon, Beacon, thank you. And that passed the Beacon at uh, Darlington was a drugstore. The Manor. Next to the Manor. Yes. And then there was a drugstore up at uh, the corner. It, it was Sun later before that was Mayfire, I think. Uh, then we had, well, that one at Forge and Shady. But, yeah. But it, I know change is good, but I really enjoyed Squirrel Hill years ago. Of course, you can't go back. I don't know if anybody agrees with me, but uh, it was a nice place to grow. And I hope you did. Lori, why did we all go crazy over the Rambler when it came out? It was a small car with good gas mileage, and we had a great president. I had one of the first. Yeah. Well, you know, talking about that, GM and Nash both owned uh, refrigeration systems. They had to pay the union wages that the auto workers paid, and that's what helped put them out of great close business because they couldn't pay that high rate uh, for labor rate. They, they couldn't compete. They like American Motors couldn't compete. American Motors couldn't compete with GM. Yeah. That's why they gave Frigidaire up and Kelvinator Leonard. But it, it's another story. When I was young, uh, Nash Motors was now where the library is at Pitt. It became uh, Park Shenley, I think, that everybody misses. And at one time, they had another building in the back. They had 150 mechanics to fix Well, they have trouble. The cars were bombs, parking <laughs> all of them. It, it's a shame that it took us so long. I wanted years ago, when we started having trouble with our cars, to go over to Japan, get some of them engineers and put them to work for us. And straight, they wouldn't do it. But uh, things have changed, and we're, I guess we're all getting older. Is anybody as old as I am here? <laughs> How old are you? I like going to be by six. <laughs> Nita, nine. Yeah. Nita is my, one of my best friends. She goes to General Ford's apartment right down the street. Um, I had a lot of fun in the automobile business. In fact, my wife was sick now. And, excuse me. She pulled out of the door the trips that I won when I was a Nash and Chevy dealer. And somewhere in printed there was over 20 trips I won. So it was very fortunate that way. Uh, I like the automobile business. It's different now. Uh, today it's lease and buy used cars. And a good example of that is the man has just passed away from Enterprise. Uh, he started a business. He gave good service, good price, and built 
it to the largest rental company in the United States, in the world. He just passed away, I think, last week. Uh, he's bigger than her, Amos. So that's it. Now, does anybody have some questions? Morning. Give me a break. I talk too much. I'll, I have a few because we've been doing some research. And I let me start. The garage that was near where the JCC is now, down this, uh, then from this corner. Yes. Was it? A, do you remember what it was and what years it was? There? I did. I did relate to that. No way. But I'll give you a tip. It was in the building, and during the war, Don the nursery had all their plants. After that, when the war ended, uh, Connell Motors went in there. Carl. Connell. He had Nash. My brother and his father-in-law bought them out, I'd say in 1951. And he had Nash and lived with his father-in-law. And later on, about two years later, they switched to Mercury. It was a more or less a warehouse during the war with plants and that. Do you remember that? Yes, yes, I do. <coughs> I didn't know that it was a warehouse for plants, but I do remember the national yeah. cars being out there. That's a long time ago. Anything else? Uh, by the time you got in the business, was there something called Merge Motors anymore? Yes, yes. yes. Burge. Burge. Yeah, it was, well, they changed it. The original owner was Cohen and Evans. I forgot they had for a gas station, too. They had a garage and towing service. Did they have to gas too? Yeah, they sold gas. But Merge was a company after. There was a Whiteman and uh, Wilkins. Wilkins, yeah. He, uh, they quit that and went up to Aetna. And opened the Chevrolet dealership. What kind of gas did they sell there? Mobile. Mobile gas. Good for you. You get the prize. <laughs> Anybody else? No, I thought there was a dealer on uh, Murray's where uh, Dumpling House is. I can't hear you. I thought there was a, a dealer, car dealer, where uh, Dumpling House is now. That's the Mini House? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. The where the record, where yeah. Mini, between yeah. Minios yeah. and the uh, records. I think it was a plenum. Well, that, that, that was uh, Karen Place, right? Charles. Yeah, before that, Charles. Before that. It was Ford. It was Ford. It was Ford. It was Ford. It was a man's name. And then it was closed. Then my dad took it over without Mobile. And then Ferderberg took it over for DeSoto Plymouth. There's still a driveway there, isn't there? Yes, there's still a driveway. And there was another one. Was that, was that 2130 Murray? Pardon? Was that 2130 Murray? Could be, yes. Oh, I did leave one thing out. My dad sold the biggest lemon that ever lived. <laughs> Has anybody ever go to Heinz Hall and see the uh, American Bantam there? The Bantam? Yes. <laughs> It was made in Butler where they developed the Jeep. That car, he had three of them. They go two blocks if we're lucky. We had to tow it back. I mean, it was bad. I mean, we keep the car running. He finally gave it up. He came to his hands in the air. In fact, I remember he sold one to, for a parts truck for Allegheny Motors, which is an Oldsmobile dealer. And I think McCain changed the name to their name. But there's been a lot of dealers like Samson was big at one time. It, well, when the families pass on, it changes. Uh, it's it's so different. Go ahead. Uh, did you say that? Did you say that uh, uh, that your family owned the sh where Cayman Chevrolet used to be? No, no, no. Oh, that was never reversed. No, no. I wish they did. Uh, which ones did you own? I did. I had the one in the Hill District I moved to, Carr. Then I went with partners on Lee and Mercury and Wilkinsburg, and we moved to Monroeville. In fact, my ex-partner ex -partner called me up today to see how it was. 
Yeah. I was wondering, how many cars did you normally sell in a year? Like a thousand cars? No. You, cars? you didn't have many dealers that did that. Now it could be a little different. Uh, see, most of uh, like the Chevrolet, they had a man there strictly selling fleet. And he got a commission, and he had some come kind of in with all the police departments and the boroughs, and they hit a thousand. Now, uh, I'd say the biggest Chevrolet dealer is the one out by the airport. Ford, I don't know, I mean, because I'm out of it. But it, it's a completely different business. When you, we had 10 cars in stock, you thought you had a lot. They're all, they're, they're up to three, four hundred dollars. I mean, 340 cars. So uh, it's, it's a, well, all businesses are different today. If the interest, like I told you, were like they were 25 years ago, you'd never see them cars, they'd go broke. How did I, I had a formula. Uh, it was like, no, it's a car, 18%, cut in half, gave you 9%, for five years gave 45%, a $20,000 car had $900, $9,000 interest on it. That was when Mr. Carter was president. So, and he couldn't stop them today. Yes, ma'am. Corey, what did my, the first Nash Rambler cost? I'd say $900. I'll tell you, I forgot this. The automobile show, I was the president of the organization, by the way, for one year. Um, when I was a young kid, anybody know where Hump Armour is? Yes. That's where the automobile shows were. Uh, after that, it was Motor Square Garden, and for a couple years, it was the Civic Arena, and we moved in the new convention center. Right with you. George Romney's father was president of America. Motors. Greatest man, my wife and I. Yeah, my, my wife and I said, when we used to go and hear him at the meeting, I said, that's going to be our next president. Well, his son took over. Well, he, he opened his mouth and said the wrong thing when he was trying to be president. You, you know what? I never talked in front of the audience before, but I'll tell you, I didn't. I thought they had a prompter in front of me, so I wouldn't mess up. <laughs> uh, there's something else you brought up. Uh, gee, I but I, I love the automobile business. I'm glad I'm not in it today. Uh, I did do this. I was one of the first dealers. I wasn't allowed to do it. Had three franchises at one time, partners. It didn't work out, but I had a Ford, I had a partners in a Chevrolet dealer in Donegal. I was in partners with the Monroeville, with the Lincoln Mercury, and my Rambler dealer which later switched to Chevrolet. You weren't allowed to have more than, than one dealership, so they changed the laws. I do, go ahead, I'm sorry. I just want to ask you, uh, Fort Worth Murray, where the city service station was in the early 60s, behind it was a wall with a Plymouth sign painted on it. Just want to know if you knew what dealership that was for. That had to be uh, Ferdinand. He was up the street. He might have had the sign there. That's, you know, funny we're talking score low. That Fort Worth Avenue never developed. Never developed. It never came into anything. In fact, now you brought it up. There was a hot puppy on the triangle there, not there, not the white one down the road, but in the corner right across from the bowling alley. It was a small. I remember one thing: if everybody ever saw it, you had you had ordered a coat. He put a cold, a warm coat on this side, and somehow the cold one came out on the other side. <laughs> But uh, but that that is it's amazing. The show was there, but it, none of the retail business really developed at all. Let me have their hand up. Yeah, I have a question. Do you, do you 
remember that there was a Fisher plant out? Yes. Out in uh, just West pa Just past it. What did they make? What did they make? They made parts. What, what kind of parts? For Chevrolet Ford. I'm um, Chevrolet Buicles. Body yeah. parts? Or? Yes, body parts. In fact, I passed through the other day to go get my heart to crabs, and it's ripped down. It was a beautiful facility. Sir, I just have a sort of a humorous note. <clears throat> Cayman Chevrolet was right next to the Atlantic Station. Yes. My dad ran the Atlantic Station for years. And when Saul Cayman would sell a car, he sent it over to our station and we gave the customer five gallons of gas. You want, worth about a buck you, at that time. You want, you want to see something amazing? Huh? There's a lady back here. It was in her father was in competition with your dad. Stand up. I'm embarrassing you. Tell them what, tell them what your dad owned or ran. Uh, the Murray Bartley. Yamako Station and later became American. Did you hear her story? Yes. Her dad had the station next to Shulward Presser on Marie and Bartlett. Your uncle was so Mark Baker. I had another man I wanted to come in. His name is uh, Bernie Bernstein. But he was afraid he would talk in front of him. He worked in a lot of games. He ran the golf station in Fort Murray for a while. I just forgot this I want to show you. My daughter's here, and her son went to the school at the University of Washington, went to Cuba, and it's a car. Is he selling that? It's not a better Kaiser? I don't know what it is. It goes backwards or forwards. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? What about you want to look at the yeah. cars back here? What about the Metropolitan Nash, that little car? That was made in England. That was a president we had who was very intelligent, who actually ran a uh, kilometer division of Nash Motors. He decided to come out with a small car. And, I, and he had made the Metropolitan the rim. The Metropolitan was actually made in England. And was, it was, it a decent, car. was it a good car? It was decent. decent. English cars aren't that great, to my estimation. Uh, anybody else need to help me out? Yeah. Well, I could probably, actually, uh, I think you just heard of Steve. Um, I could probably go on for an hour, but I, you know, a lot of people want to get home and go to bed or not. But, uh, my brother just mentioned the Atlantic Station. And I'm going to mention my dad's name, Richard T. Young. Dick Young, I don't know if any of you remember him or not. Richard what? Richard T. Young. He was Young's Atlantic. The mobile station. From, no, the Atlantic. Your brother was at the mobile station. Who? That's your brother. Your brother. No, no, no. We'll discuss that later. Uh, he had the Atlantic Station from about mid-late 40s to 1959. If people want to get into names, I, could, I mean, I was just a young kid then, but I could go on and on with gas station owners. Tilden, Tilden Levine bought it, <laughs> and, and Bob Levine had the SO, then Tommy Fall had the SO. The mobile, I don't remember, back in the 60s. Then Marty Rich had it, Franny Fennis, a lot of these people are gone now. This is uh, Alice, right? Joyce. Joyce. Was Alice, Alice my sister. sister? Your dad was, it was Phil, Phil was it Baker or Baker? Well, he pronounced it Baker when he pronounced okay. it. And then Mr. Spokane, Sandy Spokane's dad had, uh, there were two stations at Bartlett and uh, Murray, what, and, and there were, the car dealers were across the street. The old Giant Eagle was on this side of the street, if you remember. There were car dealers, Smoke, and Smokies, if people listen to Porky Chedrick in the old days, he had an ad, it was Smokey talks to her car. Well, Smokey's car service was right next to the Giant Eagle up until, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 years ago. But, you know, school had, what, 12 or 13 gas stations at one yeah, time. Yeah, okay. How the heck did they all do business at some years? Because people lived in the city then, I guess. Yeah. They built that one, uh, way back, the one at uh, uh, Murray and Beacon didn't even exist. Well, you, you know, you talk about gas stations. When I went to California, I worked right near the Coliseum for Union Oil when I was going to school. And... Before the war, you pulled in, they checked the tires, 
They brushed the inside of the car out. He painted the tires, checked the oil water, and cleaned the windshield. If you got a gallon or two gallons. The gas was cheap then. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 I remember twenty-two nine back in the day. Okay. Go ahead. I just wanted to get your comments or thoughts on this. Someone raised the question about the national movement. And my impression I mean, my, my, my recollection is that the Nash Rambler actually cost a few dollars more than the Ford or Chevy or Plymouth. But the reason they were so successful was because George Mason and George Romney actually said, it'll be small, but it won't cheap, be cheap. And they loaded it with accessories and had very good quality control. And so they... Yeah. They actually, it was actually a very good car. That's yeah. why they said oh, yeah. it was hard to fight the big three. It was hard to fight the big three. Oh, you, yeah. have, you have a disadvantage. Uh, but I, I, it was a very successful car. I think uh, I was on the right time life with you. I think GM controlled NADA at that time, and they got away with murder. That's the National Automobile Association. Um, it's a bit, it was a very interesting build business. I don't. I asked. You said before. I didn't think I could cope with it today, with the computers and everything else. Excuse me. I read Lee Iacocca's autobiography. He said in the 50s, when General Motors had over 50 percent of the market, they'd have dropped their auto prices $100. They'd have put everybody else out of business. Good. That's how much market control they had. When I was a murder dealer, I saw him speak. He said, you dealers throw your watches away and work. And I said to myself, you stinker, why? You, we should put the hours up. When I first <laughs> moved to Carrick, I worked from 9 o'clock to 9 o'clock five days a week, and Saturday from 9 to 5. So I was putting enough hours in. But he was a good speaker. You don't have to count people that it, I don't think. Anybody else help me? I just wanted to mention one other thing about Cayman Chevrolet. The, the new the new models would come out what, September, October, somewhere yes. in that area? Well, when they the new ones in their showroom was right up on Forbes. They'd get that big cute spotlight sitting out uh, out on Forbes, shining it up to attract people. And he'd bring the pirates up there. I mean I got Roberto Clemente's autograph in, I don't know, what nineteen fifty eight maybe. And supposedly he'd get a like a scriber or whatever, and I guess if you paid more, he'd put his name in the uh, in the uh, the bumper of the cars. So you know, I don't know how much more they charge for that, but uh, that that was a good way to hang out with some of the local athletes. They, you know, but isn't that funny? In my notes, I forgot. Years ago, when the cars used to come out, we covered them. We covered them. An announcement was a big surprise. Also, somebody sent me uh, a couple weeks ago, who was his name, Harris, the Red photographer? Harris. Oh, oh, Teeny Harris. Harris. My dad, when he was up in the hill, he, put, he liked everybody. He had a preacher by the name of Reverend, oh, jeez, God. Anyhow, in the showroom, he had this Reverend playing the piano, and that's the picture. The Reverend, and there was a Nash in the thing. Who was that? He was on radio all the time. Oh, shoot. But the good old times. Anybody else have anything to say? We'll think of it. I thought it was going to be up here for 10 minutes. Or way back there, wasn't it? Hey, it's right here for 10 minutes. I just wanted to ask you, just, you said that the inventory and the old dealerships here was not as big as, obviously not as big as it is now, but you said this is 10 cars? Or how many cars would you sell? I said we maybe had 10 cars in stock. We could order a car, uh, like on a Monday in three days, three weeks later it was in your showroom. But not, it's, a, it's different today. We, we, we didn't have to stop. And then back then, another is no, the day anybody goes in to buy a car, they drive it home that day. Back then, you waited three weeks and people were satisfied. 
Well, let me do something here. Let me ask, I've been doing some research, so let me ask you some questions uh, that I'm sure uh, would be helpful here. We okay. charge. I want, to, okay. I want to start with the corner up, uh, up uh, forward to the chase. You said that there were four gas stations in the 60s. Yes. And then one of them was replaced by Constantine, where the Starbucks is now. Yes. Um, when did that, the four gas stations start, more or less? Was that there for more than 10 years? Yes. It was there for a long yeah. time, okay. Um, well, but gas stations were like banks. You were in every corner. Okay. For a long time. Which was in fact, I went up to Carrick the other day, I cried. The bank, it was a mountain of citizens, it's closed. That's how bad the territory got up there. Um, Caymans, after the, um, after the theater came in, did came, was that the end of Cayman? That was the end of Cayman. Okay. Did Constantine move anywhere? Or Constantine moved to a Bomb Boulevard, uh, right near uh, what's it, Whole Foods up the block. It was an art uh, yeah, establishment right. or something that's closed. The, the gas, the service station, no, the dealership down below Forbes and uh, Murray, do you know when that closed? The one that you said had multiple, was, was a mash, and then... Uh, you mean up the, here? Uh, the On 4th right Street? Here, right here. Do you know when uh, that I'd say that closed, I'd say about 1950. Uh, okay. I thought of something, and we had not. Give me one second. But everything's changed, I guess. Tom Constantine, the son of the owner, ran the operation down at Palm Boulevard, and he, he supplied cars for the Olympics in Atlanta. And he was experimenting with propane-driven cars, the first gasoline I ever heard of, before, you know, before gasoline or electric. He was pulling around with propane gas. To move cars. You know what's too funny? I can't think of her name. Her last name is Oranger now. It's the daughter of Tom. I wanted to see they give him Fox Chapel. I wanted to come. I couldn't find her number in the yeah. book. Yeah. He was still active at that the time. Fun, the funniest thing is the terrible great religion in that everybody thought they were Italian. They were Syrian. Yeah. Right. Because of the name. Yeah. I don't mean to contradict the expert, but I mean my memories going back to the 50s. There were three stations up at the corner. Dunkin' Donuts is where my dad's station was, the Atlantic. The other corner where the medical building is at was Bob Levine's SO. The uh, mobile station was where the Starbucks is. Constantine was over to the side of it. And, and Rosen's, everybody knows about Rosen's, that was the place to go and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes when you were allowed to smoke inside. So my recollection, there were three stations on the corner. And, and one of the coffee shops up here, I don't know if I one. It was one next door. Next door the to the Atlantic gas station. Did your, did your dad have that? No. Who had the gas? was on Murray. There was a Murray market. Yeah, there was, a, there was, was two it gas it stations, bumper to bumper. Uh, we we meet, were the, on the Atlantic? He said your brother is a where's your brother? He said the end was beside the end. I'll tell you what, I'll make your wage for dying. There was a picture in the one coffee shop up here from the 30s. The Atlantic station was at either a Texaco or an Amico. Yeah, it, the one coffee shop up here, I don't know. Next city, I don't drink coffee. Coffee, coffee, yeah. coffee three hundred. Two gas. They stations. had old spoiled photos in it. I want your address, and I oh, want you to send me the time. Mr. Davis. <laughs> if you say number four, I'll take four. Yes, yes. Four. Yes. Yes. Oh, down four. Go ahead. Yeah. Four. Uh, four. 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 Yeah, 
right next to him was, I think, a hammer conversation. I think so, too. Which Cayman <coughs> took over. When Cayman expanded and made their building into an ocean building, that they took that and tore it down, and that's where they made their showroom. I want to thank you for mentioning Rogers, and that was my uncle. <laughs> don't forget, and uh, Doris was in behind it, and Chester the Tulio. Is that what you re remember? What's that? Uh, that the, the, uh, Amico, the second station was actually torn down when came in Chevrolet and Chevrolet. Well, that might be. I'm, that's before my time. Yeah, yeah. We moved to Swell Hill in 56. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I started in 56. I recall uh, in the 60s in Homestead, as you uh, crossed the Homestead Highland yeah. Bridge and went up the hill, there was an office building on the left. And there was a, there were a set of pumps on the curb, and it was a gas station that you did not pull off the street, but you basically parked oh, there was a on the curb. Yeah. Were, there, were there any like that in Squirrel Hill? No, I don't think. No. It was just curbside. You know, it's funny. Curbside. Yeah. Curbside. Yeah. We had spur gas. Nobody would buy. No more gas because everybody's really for junk. But today, you don't know what kind of gas you're getting because it interchange. But I, yeah, I really enjoyed myself. I never had a hard one. And if you have any questions, please ask them before we leave the podium. Your memory is wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. What a great. I get here. <laughs> I'd like to introduce my oldest daughter, Kathy Mattis. She needs to help me out with my wife. Do you remember Sam Richmond? He was attorney. He's an old attorney. He was the attorney for the National Do you remember him? He was my attorney. He says, sign his paper, so I signed it. And I went to sell my damn house. I had a $6,000 $6, lien I had to pay off. <laughs> That's terrible. Do you remember Red Yes. Is any of his family still in the I don't know. I'll tell you what he did. When he sold Nash, we had two models. Deluxe and Super. The Super was a good, he bought the, the uh, chrome name tags and changed the name of the car so he could get another $200. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Michael, one, yes. more, one more thing. On Friday night, between 6.30 and 8.30 on Forbes Avenue between Shady and Murray, the vintage car racers will have their cars on display. On Friday night. On Friday coming up. This, 15, this 15, Friday? This Friday. Between okay. 6.30 and 8.30. Did everyone hear we that? Have a car, we have a car theme. Okay. Listen, uh, thank you very much for coming. I have a, a personal request. Any of you have uh, some memories from your family uh, running business, car businesses. I wouldn't mind if you came up and saw me for a minute this evening. We're doing some further research uh, for, for a book we're writing and we're trying to tie down as accurately as possible auto dealerships. So a couple of you talked about your family uh, uh, running things. If you wouldn't mind coming up and chatting with me for just a minute, I'd appreciate it. Don't forget, another meeting this month. Uh, we have a, a cooperative uh, tradition here that people take the chairs back in the back and then we'll stack them. And uh, don't rush out, you can chat. We, we don't have any deadline here. Thanks all for coming very much. And look at the